this kit is the kit that has most instruments one would need for doing the hand instrumentation where patients have got deep periodontal pockets. Uh, the mirror is particularly nice. It's a size 5 and it's actually silvered not behind the glass but on the front so you get much better reflection with this mirror than with a normal uh, mirror that has the, the silver on the back of the glass. This is actually silvered on the front so I feel it gives much brighter reflection. This is a double-ended probe that I like and it's um, a UNC pocket probe here with a BPE probe at the other end and the BPE probe has the little ball at the end, the silver part and the black band that tells you whether you're in a code 3 or a code 4. If the black band disappears, you're code 4. If the black band is partly showing, you're code 3. So this double-ended probe, it's nice and slim and it fits very nicely into a tight pocket when one is in a pocket rather than counting how many little uh, millimeters there are one can actually subtract knowing that this is a five millimeter mark a 10 and a 15 millimeter so if the pocket is there you take away one from 10 and you know it's a nine millimeter pocket remember that the probe needs to be just 35 grams when you're probing. You don't push it into the pocket, you let it fall into a pocket and slide it around the tooth, walk it around and it will find its bleeding points and its pockets because it's so slim without being sharp. So this is my favourite instrument, another PDT. It's called a Montana Jack and as I turn it you can perhaps see there's a little rake on the neck and that helps you get access not only to the anteriors but quite far back in the mouth and it's got a very fine tip so that you can get into dentally whereas your um, ultrasonic tip might be too thick this is going to clean mesials and distals this one is a langer it's not a gracie it's got a blade on each side of the toe and it's particularly nice for routine maintenance visits when you're wanting to quickly remove the calculus from the lower anteriors because you don't need to remove it and change to another instrument. So this is a Langer, again by PDT, but it's quite a favourite instrument of mine. It's a Langer 5.6. The next instrument is a Gracie. This is the instrument I would use if I was needing to go further subgingerly because of the depth of the pocket. Or I would maybe select one that had an even shorter toe. But this is the Gracie 1-2, which is for the anterior regions of the mouth because of the straight terminal shank on the instrument. So this is a Gracie for flat surfaces. Like all Gracies, it's bladed on one side but it's really quite useful for getting into furcation areas and this is a Gracie 910. So this one, again a yellow one, is for mesial surfaces and this is a Gracie 1516 and you might spot the difference in this, it's got even more of a curve on the shank here and that's for more posterior areas of the mouth but again mesial surfaces. So the pale green is for the distal surfaces. So that is a little bit further from the midline of the mouth, but it still has a curve very similar to the instrument for the mesial surfaces. And this is a Gracie 1314. And again, like all Gracies, it's sharp one side and angled so that it makes a good contact with the root surface and the curve in the neck helps to get to the premolars and molar areas. The last instrument in the PDT set 
that I would routinely use, although that I might use others, is this Gracie for the posterior areas. It's the 1718 and this has a tremendous rake on the neck because this is the one you would use for distals of sevens, distals of eight, because this terminal shank here gives you quite good pull against the uh, root and the angle allows you to reach. So these are some other of my really favourite instruments. They're American Eagle and this is a blackjack. The blackjack is very similar to the Montana Jack, but this has a coating on the instrument so that it means that it isn't necessary to sharpen the instrument. But the metal underneath is quite brittle, so you need to be careful that once the instrument has lost its sharpness, you discard it because if you try and sharpen it, you'll thin the steel, which is a little bit brittle, and it will be more inclined to break if you put a lot of weight on the tip. The next one I'm going to show you is absolutely brilliant for gross scaling. It's called the claw, and it's from American Eagle, and this claw you can see is very similar to the jacks, but much larger, so it's really got quite a lot of power and it's a very sharp instrument, excellent for removing um, tenacious calculus, but remember that you aren't to put too much pressure on it because once they've lost their edge, they can break, though they do stay sharp for quite a long time. They go through the whole range of Gracies, these American Eagle instruments, as you can see, we've got one that is exactly the same as the one I showed you before with this terminal shank which is perfect for getting behind distal of the last molars. So don't think that just PDT and Swallow instruments are the only ones you can use. These are in Gracie and also Langer, Langer and Columbia if you like to have two edges. So essentially when you pick up an instrument it's in a pen grasp but if you rest only on your third finger it really doesn't have the power and if you use your fingers to scale the teeth or debride the teeth again it doesn't have the power. So I have developed a technique as a lot of other people have of using two fingers and using a wrist or an arm movement to really get a lot more power behind the instrument. If you're going to do hand scaling without getting tired, you need to use the power of your arm rather than the power of fingers. So this is the normal hand piece and soft rubber cup that would be recommended because the rim goes subgingively, but that's not the only one that can be used. Okay, get out. One could use a nylon brush and the nylon brush is quite good because it splays and it's fairly firm and yet gentle as well but be careful not to go over the gingival edge with it obviously. The bristle brush which is a little bit darker in colour is a true bristle and it's quite coarse but it's useful for taking off heavy stain such as tobacco stain. Not many polishes will remove corsodil, that's usually taken off with your ultrasonic and this brush in desperation with a coarse paste is quite useful. A better hand piece has a screw fitting and the brush goes into the screw and a flat black brush is ideal for cleaning lower anteriors where they're rather overcrowded because it doesn't splay out onto the gum tissue but cleans the flat enamel. Even better for tight spaces is this black, tiny, pointed brush. It's just ideal for getting to the edges of the teeth to take the stain. But remember that we aren't over polishing teeth these days. It is a cosmetic treatment and you don't have to have an air polisher to remove stain if you've got a couple of these other things that you can use. 